All right. God bless you, people of God. Once again, this is Elder R. L. Dunlap Jr. coming unto you with the only infallible, the only uncompromising, the only unadulterated word of God. We greet you from God the Father and from his son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and is now set on the right hand of the Father according to the scripture. We greet you all today. We hope and pray that all is well with you. And if it's not well, Jesus will make you well. Have faith in God. Believe him through Jesus Christ and he will make you well. All right. Don't forget we are on Facebook. That Facebook address is Elder R.L. Dunlap Jr. Facebook. Come on and share and like, comment, and any question that you may have on anything that you hear us preach, feel free to contact us through Facebook and we will answer every question you have with the Bible. All right. People of God, on today I want to talk about something. I want to talk about something. I want to talk about being slain in the spirit. I want to talk about dancing in the spirit. I want to talk about those, those two things. Being slain in the spirit. Now, I'm not talking about the false prophet Hollywood preacher that blow folks down and knock a whole section out and take his coat and fan them and knock them out, all that garbage, all of that foolishness. I'm not talking about that. God ain't no play to talk about being real. Slain in the spirit. Let me deal with slain in the spirit first. That's the term used when your Holy Ghost will uh, uh, lay you out, make you fall out, knock you out, have you where you won't stand up. Now the Spirit does that from time to time, and it's the Spirit's business on how he chooses to do it, okay? Everybody don't get slain in the Spirit. Everybody don't get drunk to where they can't stand up. It, it happened to me when I received the Holy Ghost. I couldn't stand up because of the spirit in me, because of the spirit moving in my reaction. I could not stand up to save my life. But the Holy Ghost works and through the moving of the Holy Ghost and the spirit. Sometimes, yeah, people will fall out. People will get drunk, can't stand up straight. But that drunk is not their head spinning and they dizzy. That's their reaction to the spirit on the inside. All right? Now, let me make something perfectly clear. When the Bible said that these are not drunk as you suppose, it wasn't talking about they being drunk, falling out, rolling on the floor. It wasn't talking about that. Read the scripture. You know where it's at in the book of Acts. These are not drunk was talking about. They were speaking in other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. Read for yourself. They were being drunk. These are not drunk as you suppose mean when they heard them speak in other tongues, they said these men are drunk. Not because they were staggering, falling out and all that. Matter of fact, the Bible say they were sitting and it feel all all the house where they were sitting. Almost got excited. But, yes, sometimes the Holy Ghost moving. People, some get drunk, some don't. Some fall out, some don't. But, here is the thing, and I'm going to go to another. Whenever the Spirit of God, I said the Spirit of God. I didn't say nobody pushing you down. I said the Spirit of God. I said the Holy Ghost. When and if the Holy Ghost 
knock you out, or you so-called slain in the spirit. What happened when you rose? Was you a different person? Did Jesus talk to you? Did the Lord talk to you? When Abraham, when God was dealing with Abraham, explaining to him and showing him how he was going to be the father of many nations, God caused a, 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 a deep sleep to come on him. A darkness came on him. But during that darkness, God showed him something and told him something and showed him and explained to him all the things that were going to take place in Israel, even though they being in bondage. My God, go back and read it for yourself. When Isaiah, on the day that King Uzziah died, in the train field, the temple, God's train, God spoke to him. When Jacob was asleep and had the dream, God spoke to him. Yeah. When the apostle John on the Isle of Patmos had the revelation of the last things and the letters to take to the churches, and he saw God and he fell over like a dead man. But God started talking to him. What am I trying to say, people? If you are really slain in the spirit, some, there will be a change in your life. Or God will tell you something. Love will tell me, well, <clears throat> I got slain in the spirit. I got knocked out. What happened? I had people tell me. I would call their name. The, the so-called, the, actually it was the false prophet, lay hands on. They said, Donald, I don't know what happened to me. I passed out. Okay, what happened? What God say to you? What God do for you? Nothing. I just passed out. Saw my in awe of the false prophet. Saw my in awe of leaders. Some are uh, mesmerized by these false prophets. And some real prophets. Okay. Saw my starstruck. Leader struck. <laughs> Superstar preachers. When they see them, they start crying. Well, let me let that alone. Anyway, when you are really, we call slain in the spirit. When the spirit is at work, there will be a change in you when you get up off that flow. Or when you wake up. When the spirit is at work, he will tell you something concerning what he wants to tell you. It won't be. I don't know what happened. I just fell out. Some people just laid down and took a nap. Some people believe that that's what they're supposed to do when the preacher lay hands on them. Some believe they're supposed to fall out. Now, now the spirit works, the spirit moves, but when the spirit is moving and when the spirit has work, something will happen. You will be different. You will be changed. You will get better understanding. God will tell you something. Okay. My time getting away from me. I got seven minutes. Now, and let me say this, the whole church sitting up laughing, talking about the joy of the Lord. I got, you're ignorant of the word of God. There ain't no joy in no Lord. The whole church laughing. You crazy. There ain't no joy in no Lord. Just start laughing. The whole church busts out, just start laughing. What's the laughing at? You a lie. There ain't no joy in no Lord. But anyway, Bible don't speak of nothing like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let me go follow. Dancing in the spirit. This won't take long. You don't, some, some say the Bible say you dance when the spirit moves you. That's not nowhere in the Bible. I never read. If it is now, show me and I will take back what I say. That's not nowhere in the Bible where the spirit moves you. You will dance. Some say I ain't going to move until the spirit moves me. The spirit don't have to move you. The Bible say, the Bible commands in the 150th Psalm, praise the Lord in the dance. Some don't dance, some didn't dance when they was in the world. Praise the Lord in the dance. That's not always say, clap your hands. Lift your hands. Praise Him on instruments. Praise Him, lift up your voice. Huh? The fruit of your lips. 
all of that is praising God. Now, when your football team or baseball team win the Super Bowl, you start hollering and screaming. And when the Academy Award, your movie person, your actor, actress win an award, you hollering and screaming, yeah, because of them. Now, when Jesus do something for you, isn't he worried for you to holler and scream? Yeah! Watch this, and I believe it long. When the lame man on uh, uh, in the book of Acts was healed, they say he was walking, leaping, and praising God. Walking, leaping, and praising God. When God do something for you, when Jesus do something for you, you get excited. You're going to do something. You say, well, I, I, we belong to a message, so we don't believe in doing nothing. Uh, that, look, that's a doctrine. That's not Bible, that's a doctrine. But to do something when you're happy in the world, for your baseball team, basketball team, but Jesus ain't worthy. All right, that's enough of that. Praise God. God bless you. God keep you. May God open your understanding. May you understand the scripture. God bless you is my prayer.